Well, I know my father came here. Um, he was from George County, Bendale, Mississippi, and he came to live with his brother, and he went to high school at Nichols High School here in Biloxi, and he was also involved in the wait-ins and a lot of the civil rights movements with Dr. Gilbert Mason. Um, he was Dr. Mason's bodyguard, and when Megar Evers came to Biloxi, he would drive Mega Evers around in an unmarked car. Uh, Marvin M. Dickey Sr. He owned um, the Dickey Brothers Funeral Home here in Biloxi. He started the business in 1959 here in the city of Biloxi, um, and he passed away in 2003. There were several ba black funeral homes back in the day. I can remember um, Mr. Um, McDaniel, it was McDaniel and Son Funeral Home. They were on Division Street, and um, Galloway Funeral Home was up on Howard Avenue. Now my grandparents, my grandfather um, and my grandmother, they were uh, farmers, and they were in George County. They reared um, 17 children, but my grandmother, she bore 15, and she was a midwife back in the day. She delivered a lot of her grandchildren. So they really instilled into their children, you know, work ethic, family values. My grandfather passed away. He was like 93, I believe. And my grandmother, she lived to be 104. My dad had um, a brother, Reverend A.A. A. Dickey. He was a pastor here on the coast. But before he started preaching, he uh, was a milkman, and then when he was called to the ministry, he pastored uh, the Tabernacle Baptist Church here in Biloxi for 25 years before he passed away. They have a group now called the Second Liners, and they are a group of African Americans, and they do a lot of things in the community. They have um, back-to-school events for the children. They do... Uh, senior citizen events, they feed them different holidays. As funeral home owners, a lot of us have begun to start to try and do different things in the community as well. Um, during the holidays, uh, sending out letters to those families that we've served. A lot of the funeral homes have events, a dinner, where they have the families to come in and just, you know, appreciate them during that time because during the holidays it's very difficult if you've lost a loved one. Uh, during that time. The yeah. church is the strongest entity in the black community. We've always had the, the, the black church, the black pastors, they've always been there for the community. They've always, we always knew when it was time for elections, you know, they told us, you know, what we need to do. And they're always bringing the community together, the black pastors of the churches in the community. That's the common thread that we have uh, in our black community. We had a funeral, and I didn't even realize that my dad had done all of this. Dr. Mason, during the time he was a physician, my father and another guy used to guard his home. Someone was inside, someone was on the roof. And when he had to make rounds at the hospital, they would stand guard outside of the hospital so that he could make rounds. And I've heard them talk about the wait-ins when you know blacks were not allowed on the beaches and all of that, and Dr. Mason, he was involved. My dad was right there uh, with them. And people, you know, they on the beach now, but they don't know the struggles, you know, because there was a time that we could not go, you know, there on the beach, right? We can look back and thank God, you know, how he brought us through with leaders like Dr. Mason and my father and others who paved the way for persons like me. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg, and had, not, had they not going through the civil rights era, that would have been something that I would have not been able to um, attend. And my brother, he's a graduate of Ole Miss, and you know about the James Meredith and all of that. So, you know, had it not been for the civil rights era, you know, we wouldn't have been able to uh, matriculate at white universities here in Mississippi and to earn degrees.